I've been wanting a trials bike for years and my buddy Cody gave me this Planet X Tebow frame and this series is all about the buildup of my Planet X Tebow trials bike. <music> trials riding really interests me and I'm awful at it. I don't track sand well, I don't manual very well. My bunny hops are okay but there's so much more I could improve. And trials riders have a series of skills that I do not have. And so I've been wanting to get a trials bike for quite a while to develop those skills. Now you don't need a trials bike to develop those skills, but I was looking for a project and this fell into my lap. Now the trials have a few different genres. In the professional trials competition, there's the 20 inch class, the mod class, and the 26 inch class. And those hardly resemble bikes. They don't have seats. Uh, they look really weird. They feel really weird. If you've ever ridden one, it doesn't feel like a bike. They just want to be on the back wheel all the time so you can do these hopping, jumping moves. And I didn't want something that specific that didn't feel like a bike anymore. And on the other end of the spectrum is like the Danny McCaskill type of bike. That's the street trials bike that's hopping up curbs in urban environments and having a bit of flair and show like backflips and tail whips and bar spins and all that sort of thing. I didn't quite want that either because I want to be able to ride more natural terrain, but I wanted to blend in between the two. And I actually think this frame's going to be perfect for that. This frame's maybe 15 years old, I want to say. And you'd think that would be totally outdated geometry, but it's actually super close to the Inspired Hex, which is their 26 inch street trials frame. It's got a little bit longer chainstay. <laughs> which is still crazy short. I think this is a 390, maybe 395 mil chainstay, and it's got a 1050 millimeter wheelbase. This is a 26 inch frame. You can run hydraulic rim brakes or disc brakes on it. Threaded bottom bracket. Um, it can run a seat. I think seats are cool. I think they look good. Uh, this frame isn't pretty. It's rather hideous, but that's okay. We'll do the best that we can with it. And most trials bikes look a little bit goofy anyway. It's got some scratches on, it's got some paint issues. The previous owner, before Cody, cut the seat tube off. And while I applaud crazy wild ideas like that, they didn't do a very good job. It's not super straight. There's not enough room for a seat clamp on there. It has nine millimeter dropouts. I would love a through axle or at least something that's fully captive on there. It's got a derailleur housing. So you could actually run a shifter on here, which I'm intrigued about. One of the bummers about trials bikes is you can't just ride them to get to the place you want to go because the gearing is so low, you're just spinning out everywhere. So it's actually kind of interesting to think about putting like a road cassette on here and being able to bomb down to the area I want to do, shift it into the trials gear, hop around and then have a bike I could actually ride back. I got options with that. We can also run hydraulic rim brakes or disc brakes. I've heard horror stories about the disc brakes on the old Planet X frames cracking. We'll see. I want to run discs. It's what I got and it's going to match the wheel set I've got. It's aluminum frame. I can't see any cracks. It actually looks like it hasn't been ridden a whole lot. There's no dents in the down tube. It should be a good little starter trials bike. Let's build it up and see what we can make it. The bottom bracket's full of sand and dirt and crud and I'm gonna use a little dental pick to clean it out. I'd love to buy a tap for a bottom bracket to clean up the threads but they're like $600 so that's not gonna be happening. These threads are actually in pretty good shape. They just had some dirt in them so getting the dirt and old grease out is gonna help my new bottom bracket slide in here nicely. I don't really need to do this till after I'm done painting and ideally you would thread an old bottom bracket in to seal these off so none of the threads get uh, paint on them. I don't have an old bottom bracket that doesn't work so I'm going to see if my local shop can uh, save me one when they throw away the next bottom bracket they get. Here on the frame we've got some duct tape residue and I'm going to need to wipe the whole frame down. I might use automotive brake cleaner. I might use rubbing alcohol, I might use goof off, or a combination of all of those to get all the adhesive stuff off and get this totally clean. I'm not particularly proud of the fact that this is a Brand X frame and I have no loyalty to the brand, so I'm going to be removing the head badge as well. Most people don't know this, but most head badges are just held on with double-sided sticky tape. These tools are my safe scrape blades. I'll put a link to these in the video description. These are super handy. They're plastic razor blades. 
and when uh, one of my viewers told me about these several years ago, I thought they were a joke, but they are turning out to be one of my all-time favorite tools. I've decided to remove all of the cable guides and replace them with some stick-on ones. It's an experiment. I think it's going to simplify things and look a lot cleaner. I just weighed this frame and it comes in at 4.07 pounds. Super light frame. Hopefully it's not too light and it can withstand the abuse of some trials riding. I'm not going to be doing anything huge so I think it'll be fine. Just going to finish this by hand. Got those mounts shaved off. Pretty good. Now I'm going to sand it down and get the bumps off where the graphics are and smooth these out and kind of take a look, see if I need to do anything with the putty to make it look a little bit nicer. All right, frame is all sanded. I just need to clean it down, see if there's any rough spots left, and decide if I'm ready to primer it yet. A lot of people want to know what bike stand I use. I built this bike stand, but I use the Park Tools clamp. Make sure you get this one that's got the open and shut jaws. If you've ever worked in a shop, you've used those and you know how much better they are than the spinny jaws. I can't stand the spinny ones. This is, this is the way to go. I'll put a link to this in the description below, but when you order it, make sure you order the right one because usually the link has an, one or two different ones and it's easy to click the wrong one. Make sure it's the silver one with this clamp. And then I just bolted it onto a piece of pipe from Home Depot, put a flange on it and bolted it to a big thick piece of wood for the base. All right, it's all cleaned up, ready for primer. The primer's all dry, I've had time for it to dry overnight, and now it's time to start applying some color. For paint, I use Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch. It's cheap, it's readily available, and I really like the way that it goes on. I'm trying to decide between Gloss Winter Gray, this is the color of my truck, which I love, or Gloss Dark Gray, which I think would look awesome as well. It's hard to tell just looking at the cap. They don't always turn out just like the cap, so I paint things that are tube-shaped, like paper towel tubes. This is the winter gray, and this is the dark gray. I'm gonna go with the winter gray. I'm gonna spray the whole thing. If I hate it, I can always put the dark gray over it as a second or third coat, but I think this is gonna be cool. I like that color. A Little bit unique. It almost looks like raw aluminum, but it's got more of a gray to it. 